Hey people, today we'll discuss the 20-minute drama series Unorthodox. This television series is focused around Etsy Shapiro, a 19-year-old living in an ultra-Orthodox neighborhood in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. The group is distinguished by its stringent observance of Jewish law and customs, which stands in contrast to current behaviors. Etsy has been married to Yankee Shapiro for the last year and has been raised to live life according to society's standards. She has never had much independence. At the start of the series, Etsy collects an envelope full of money along with a photo of her grandmother, a phone, and some other things. When she reaches the entry doors, he is informed that the Arabic is broken in Judaism, so she surreptitiously bundles them all into a vest and prepares to go. Etsy hides the money envelope in her grandmother's picture in the waistband of her skirt after she leaves the building to hopefully never return. On her way, she bumps into a woman who asks her where she is going. Etsy nervously claims that her in-laws are on their way to a wedding. The Arab is an enclosure made to allow people to carry personal items outside that are normally prohibited because of its absence. Yankee returns home to find his wife missing and the things she was about to pack on her bed. He suspects something is wrong but decides to wait until the next day to see if she returns home. The next morning, Yankee wakes up and discovers that Etsy has arrived at Nina, her piano teacher, who is helping her to flee to Berlin. Nina hands her the passport and a gift as she puts both of those inside her waistband and finally gets inside a car on her way to the airport. Etsy arrives at the Berlin airport happy that she is finally free before taking a taxi to her mother's address after fleeing the community almost 16 years ago. Lee has been living in Berlin. His mother begins cursing Etsy, saying that she should never have allowed a girl like that to marry her son. She is especially angry because Etsy's mother Lee also ran away from home long ago. She used to live with her grandparents because her drunken father was never really the head of the household. When the elderly woman advised Etsy to get married at the age of 18, Etsy thought it was the right course of action. Etsy's Aunt Malka started looking for a potential husband and found a man with a respectable family background. When Etsy first heard about him, she inquired as to what a man likes because she had so little control over her life. Etsy is still waiting for Lee outside of her apartment building. She opens the envelope that Nina gave her and discovers a small compass inside. Etsy smiles at the present knowing that it symbolizes Etsy finding her own way. Suddenly, Etsy notices Lee on the other side of the road kissing a woman who is unaware of the concept of homosexuality. Etsy panics and runs away before the couple can see her. Rabbi Yankee informs everyone at a meeting between Yankee's family and their community in Williamsburg that his wife was unhappy in the marriage and that he was really concerned for her welfare. When Etsy was about to get married, her future mother and sister-in-law told her to introduce herself. They wanted to establish their dominance in Yankee's life and determine whether she is attractive enough to be his wife, so her aunt took her to a grocery store where Etsy pretended to be shopping while Miriam watched her from a distance. In the present, Etsy is at a coffee shop trying to find her. Etsy's greatest dream in life is to attend a live musical event someday. She is a talented pianist who was unable to pursue her passion because of her religion, but now that she has the time on her hands, she decides to watch Robert and his friends perform. The music brings back memories of the day Yankee and his family came to see her for the first time, and when she locked eyes with them, she was unable to look away. Yankee, on the other hand, was bashful and couldn't maintain eye contact when given solitude to speak. The two spoke about music and appeared to click right away. When the musical performance is over, Etsy approaches the group and compliments them. They were planning to go to a lake and take a swim and ask Etsy to join them on their way. The group introduces themselves to her and all of them turn out to be from different countries and ethnicities. They first met when Etsy's father brought her to Nina's home to inquire for rent. Nina offered to give Etsy piano lessons for free in the hopes that her father would give her some slack. She was also the first person to recognize Etsy's talent in the present. One of the girls, called Noel, is from Israel and is also Jewish but she is not traditional like Etsy. When they get at the lake, the girls strip off their clothing and swim in their bikinis. It is all new to Etsy, so she chooses to stay out of the water. A friendly group member named Deja offers to watch over her possessions and encourages her to go swimming. Etsy complies but only removes her stockings as soon as she steps into the water. At this point, she is relaxed. A few moments later, she reveals that she is wearing a wig and takes it off to reveal her naturally short hair. It turns out that in their religion, only husbands can Etsy follows Deja and finds the auditorium where the group was rehearsing earlier. She decides to spend the night there while hiding beneath a table, while Moishi and Yankee travel to Tanina's home to find out where Etsy is. Yankee wants to have a pleasant conversation, but Moishi is hostile. He threatens Nina and learns that Etsy has flown to Berlin. They then come home and discuss what to do. To their amazement, they check Etsy's phone and discover an open voicemail. The gynecologist's voicemail informs Etsy that she is indeed pregnant. 
the news is bittersweet for Yankee because they have been trying to conceive a child since the first day of their marriage. However, now that his wife is pregnant, she is not with him. They take the matter to the rabbi once more after learning that Etsy is pregnant because they cannot allow her to take the child away from the community. The rabbi instructs Moish and Yankee Etsy was never educated about sex until just before her wedding, when a designated instructor met with her one-on-one -on -one and explained how sexual encounters operate. Etsy was appalled by the idea, but she mentally prepared herself for the wedding night. The teacher had stressed that the only purpose of sexual activity should be to bear a child because her future in-laws will expect her to become pregnant as soon as possible. In the scene that follows, Etsy wakes up under a table. The cleaning lady notices her and complains to the music teacher, Kareem. He informs Etsy that she cannot stay there at night and asks her where her home is. When Moishi and Yankee arrive in Berlin and check into a hotel, the receptionist gives Moishi a room, which the Yankee is suspicious of because he has never liked Moishi because of his eccentric behavior. They go to their room and perform. Etsy tries wearing jeans for the first time. Etsy buys multiple outfits to change into in a bag to keep them wet as well as caps to cover their curls, which are seen as extra by those outside of the faith. Etsy likes the idea and decides to fill out a form right away. When Yankee checks the earlier package and discovers a revolver inside when Moishi isn't looking, he becomes even more apprehensive about working with Moish. Later, they go to Lee's house and ask her to bring Etsy outside. Leah is shocked since she didn't even aware that her daughter had run away from home. When Moishi attempts to aggressively rush in, Leah shuts the door in his face and threatens to call the police. In this scene from Etsy's wedding day, which is an unusual Jewish wedding, Kareem brings Etsy to his class so she can observe the other students' performances. Etsy hears the group from yesterday discussing her, but Yael ignores her and declares that women in her faith are nothing more than baby machines. When Kareem orders everyone to take their seats and the orchestra begins to play, he attempts to correct her for her ignorance but is cut off when Deja continues making blunders. At first, Etsy was anxious and kept repeating the prayers, but soon she began to enjoy herself and was overjoyed about the start of her new life. Etsy senses this and tries to cheer her up a grateful Deja invites her to the dorm for dinner with her friends. A clip from Etsy's wedding shows us how she and Yankee were left alone in a room that day both of them were so nervous that they only touched each other's hands Yankee also gifted her a pair of diamond earrings following that they danced while the guests sang for them after the wedding. Etsy initially refuses to play, but eventually gives in after being pushed. Everyone listens to her play a beautiful piece, but it is obvious to them that the judges won't accept a student whose skills are just average. Yael speaks up, saying that the piece was beautiful but it will never impress the judges and even goes as far as to say that she and her group have been practicing instruments every day since they were young. According to their tradition, women are only permitted to share beds with their husbands for half of the month when they are ovulating, so they decide to try every night for as long as they can. However, even after a week of trying, they are unable to get intimate because Etsy stops him every time, and because Yankee has no boundaries with his mother, he tells her everything about his sex life which further leads to the problem. After searching for the grave of an elderly rabbi for more than an hour, Moish and Yankee find it in a jungle-like area and pray there. In the following scene, Etsy visits a gynecologist to get checked out. When the doctor suggests different options to end the pregnancy, Etsy asserts that her community is rebuilding the six million Jews who perished in the Holocaust and believes the child is a gift. She refuses to have an abortion, because Etsy Moish is using the chance to attend clubs and reconnect with old pals. All Yankee wants is his wife back, and going to clubs is against their faith. However, Moishi pushes Yankee to go there one time, and when the prostitute attempts to touch him, Moishi even forces Yankee into the room with her. Yankee withdraws, saying that his wife should be the only one to touch him, but he still uses the opportunity to learn more about how to please a lady. The next day, Etsy reads a job posting for a church choir. She visits the location and takes in the group's beautiful singing before realizing that she is trying to convert to yet another religion. Having had enough of moisture and his laziness, Yankee goes to meet Lee on his own at her workplace. At first she refuses to speak to him, but when he begs, she eventually agrees to do so. She also says that she probably left before leaving because of how he and his family treated Etsy. Lee puts Yankee's number on a piece of paper, which Lee promptly discards when Yankee departs. Yankee is forced to consider his history and his marriage as a result of Lee's statements. Etsy struggled to have intimate moments with her husband even after they were diagnosed with anxiety. One night, the husband and wife got into a heated argument as a result of the pressure they were under to become pregnant after only a few months of marriage. Etsy could barely handle the pain that Yankee put her through whenever they tried. She began going to a teacher from their community to find out what she was doing wrong. In the present, a burglar takes advantage of Lee's absence from her home and enters it. We see a flashback of a dinner party at Etsy's grandfather's house. 
Etsy wasn't feeling well that day, but didn't know why she left in the middle of dinner, disrespecting the hosts at home. She took a pregnancy test and discovered that she was pregnant at last. She waited for her husband to return to tell him the good news, but when he did, Yankee yelled at her for disrespecting him by leaving him alone with her family. He didn't when Etsy realized the divorce was also his mother's idea. She decided to leave everyone and everything she had ever known behind in Berlin. The next morning, Etsy wakes up next to Robert and doesn't regret what happened the previous evening. After breakfast, he takes her to a pianist who will assist her in her audition the following day. In the meantime, Moise tells Yankee about his wife's antics, and Yankee informs Etsy about it. When Moish discovers Etsy walking alone on the street, he pursues her, captures her, and forces her into a park before threatening to bring her back to Williamsburg with a pistol. After the encounter, Etsy rushes to her mother's house terrified of what will happen next as they talk as he finds out that Lee didn't abandon her in fact her grandparents separated them after her parents got divorced. She stays the night at the house and wakes up fresh the next morning as Lee prepares her for the audition and sees her off professionally. A few hours later, when Etsy finally enters the stage in front of the judges, she informs them that she would be singing rather than playing the piano. Yankee's getting ready to do the same. Robert and the rest of the group are in awe of her beautiful voice as she performs a beautiful German song. Yankee also arrives in time to listen to her sing after the first song. The judges ask her several questions about her life. Etsy tells him that a woman's singing was considered a modest in her culture so she practiced in secret. The judges are still confident in her talent despite the last minute change. After the audition, Etsy comes outside to see Yankee in front of her. They go for a walk while talking about things other than her return. Yankee compliments her singing and laughs about how everyone can see her hair. Eventually, they go to his hotel room where he kisses her for the first time. However, Etsy withdraws and says she can't go back to him. Yankee apologizes and begs for a second chance. 